Hey guys, All In Crypto here and welcome back ladies and gentlemen for another YouTube video. I hope you've all had a great week so far. Today we're going to be diving into our daily cryptocurrency market update where we look at the cryptocurrency realm and the external world around us. As we know, given the nature of our market cap and some of the players involved in it, we are increasingly more tethered with the financial landscape around us with global macroeconomic events. And more importantly, and it's something we're really going to talk about in this video, what the Federal Reserve do or don't decide to do. This is the most important chart, in my opinion, that you can look at. At the top here, we've got the dollar. And at the bottom here, of course, we've got Bitcoin. They are exceptionally correlated. And that's what's really going on here, guys. What you've got to remember is Bitcoin is challenging the dollar. And the dollar is really what gives the United States the power that they have. I've just finished reading this book called A Brief History of Money, 400 well, 4,000 Years of Markets, Currency, Debt and Crisis by David Orell. Fantastic book, guys. And one thing that's echoed throughout this book is the fact that currencies play a huge role in the success, in the success of an empire. Um, and the US dollar is no different. It references a book from Adam Smith, The Wealth of Nations, which is one of the first economic books that I wrote. Um, and essentially talks about the fact that money is really a ideology that's backed up by military might. And that's been true throughout history and is still true today, certainly with the US dollar. And we're going to talk about a number of very interesting things in this video. Um, reading is, I mean, we live in a world where everything's audio. Um, I mean, I'm dyslexic, so reading isn't my favorite thing to do, but it's certainly something that you almost have to do as an investor to gain a good idea um, of what's taking place. And all of these, everything that I've read is relevant today in the cryptocurrency markets um, and certainly relevant with given what Bitcoin's trying to achieve and why it was created to really challenge and to implement a new currency system in adversary of the fiat systems around the world that are government backed um, as governments clearly can't be trusted um, with fiat systems. Um, and this has been true throughout history. Currencies have played a huge role in the rise and fall of empires. Uh, and it's no different today, ladies and gentlemen. So you have to remember that as a cryptocurrency investor, that there's something far, far greater than just money being made and lost here. There's an entire social experiment almost taking place. Um, and, and, and the victor will um, become apparent in the not too distant future, in my opinion. Now, are the US dollar or are the US government um, the people who issue the world reserve currency and they have a lot of power associated with that? Um, really going to allow something like Bitcoin to challenge it. And that's what we're going to be getting into in this video. We're going to be looking at a number of things. We're going to be going over some of Gary Gensler's recent comments. Gary Gensler is the chairman of the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission. Um, and he's essentially kind of tarnishing crypto with a broad brush, saying that they are um, securities largely based on the fact that people give um, these cryptocurrency issuers money in the expectations of returns. And he's saying that that is a security and that they need to kind of clamp down on it um, or largely that they're securities, even though he's previously said, or the SEC has previously said Ethereum and Bitcoin aren't securities. Um, so it, it, there's a lot going on. I have mixed, I agree with some of what Gary Gensler says. Gary Gensler, by the way, used to teach uh, a blockchain course at MIT, um, which is a very, very well-renowned technical university in America. And um, so this guy knows what he's talking about. But he also has allegiances to the um, opposite team, if you will. Um, so it, it's very interesting what's going on. I think a lot of the price movement that we've seen, yes, we saw a cascade of liquidations. Um, we're going to look at the coin shares inflow or outflow in this case report. Um, and this is coin shares are typically a body that institutions will use to get exposure to crypto. And we've seen a huge amount of outflows, certainly um, at the start of this year. And that could be a lot or certainly in my opinion, has a lot to do with the firming up of the US dollar that the Federal Reserve are threatening to do um, via inflate, um, interest rate hikes and tackling inflation and stopping sort of bond buybacks and being so um, frivolous with the um, um, printing that's going on, the proliferation of the money supply. Um, and, and the Romans really suffered massively uh, due to the fact that they started actually devaluing the currency that they had at the time in, certain, in terms of silver content. And that actually saw a, a lot of unrest come with it. Um, so it's all very interesting. History is something you should all learn about um, and not the mainstream narrative history. The mainstream narrative history is compiled of mostly spin spin-offs of the truth. 
Um, and, and the reason being is because history is always wrote by the victor. Um, and there's certain things that as citizens, as good little citizens, they don't want you to know because then you'd start questioning everything else. It's kind of like um, they view you kind of in a childish way that they can just sort of tell you what they want. You'll believe it and everyone's happy. Whereas if you kind of get a glimpse of, hang on, maybe they're not telling the truth on certain things, everything kind of unravels. That's a bit out there, but certainly something that on this channel, um, I think you guys are mature enough to... Um, deal with the possibility that maybe the world isn't all that it's being cracked up to be. And I'm sure certainly a lot of people in the cryptocurrency realm already have this kind of an understanding of the world and it not potentially being painted in such a picture that's been made out for us. We're already seeing the firming of the dollar take place um, and, and the fact that the Fed are potentially, we spoke about this in yesterday's video, the fact that I think inflation is going to come out higher on Wednesday um, than the Federal Reserve had hoped for, or higher than it had previously been in November. Oops, US 10-year yield jumps 1.8% uh, for the first time since January 2020. US inflation data out on Wednesday will be um, keenly watched as concerns grow. The Fed is behind the curve on tackling um, elevated price pressures. US CPI may have accelerated to 7% in December. Isn't it interesting how we looked at Kazakhstan yesterday, which essentially rebelled against their government due to the rising energy prices. Um, there's been turmoil in Kazakhstan for a long time, um, but the energy prices were just ridiculous. Isn't it weird how fiat currencies around the world are somewhat failing? Um, and and it, so many unanswered questions with who Satoshi is, who he potentially could be, um, and, and, and how Bitcoin came into existence. Um, we know why, but it's almost playing out exactly how he had envisioned it. Um, I personally think Satoshi is more than likely dead. Um, that would explain why his coins haven't moved. Lots of people think it's Hal Finney. There's a number of other contenders. Um, but ultimately, you know, it, it, there's a lot of unanswered questions. It's, it's very uncertain uh, times that we're living in, very special times as well. There's huge opportunity um, for wealth to get transferred from one class to another. Um, so, you know, a lot of what we're seeing right now in the market, certainly with Bitcoin and it's selling off, dragging the altcoins with it as we know it does, um, is just to do with to do with a lot of the uncertainty in regards to how markets are going to look given what's happening with the Fed. This has caused a cascade of liquidations. We've seen a lot of institutional money actually flow out of crypto. The top six countries in the US, I think other than Apple or it could be Google, it's one of the two, don't, don't quote me on this, but I know that out of the six largest companies in the US, five of them are holding a lot more cash than they hold debt, which is rather un- usual so are they looking to take advantage of something that's coming in the future it's all still to play for but this is a, a coin shares report and it sees a huge amount of outflows um for the cryptocurrency market which is certainly interesting um and these are all just pieces to the puzzle that we're trying to put together for you in these videos so this was gary gensler i'm not actually going to play the the clip because i don't want to get a copyright stamp um i've retweeted it it's from coreyswan.com um, and of course, you'll be able to find this on YouTube, probably on the CNBC TV channel. Uh, and Gary Gensler is essentially saying, they always try and catch him out and go, well, can you give us specifics on one crypto? He's too smart for that. He just says broadly, you know, we think that crypto is kind of under our um, radar and potentially would qualify as securities and we're going to need to deal with it accordingly. The SEC was created in the name of um, protecting investors, retail investors. Um, it has done that in certain cases. Um, and what he does say, one thing I agree with Gary on here um, is that there needs to be a bit of a disclaimer with and, and some more understanding with investing in crypto. Somebody that makes YouTube videos, there's a lot of naivety out there. A lot of you people are extremely smart uh, and well-read and, and, and sort of understand really what's going on here. But there is quite a lot of naivety attached with any markets, any retail investor, um, and not really understanding the full picture of what's taking place. And um, he's kind of championing the fact that there needs to be more of an educational um, um, role here. And remember, the SEC keep knocking back the um, request for an ETF, a spot Bitcoin ETF, which many of them have said there's no reason why there isn't one if we've got futures. This is all part of it. And, and this him being a part of going back to the book that we spoke about and, you know, what's really going on here, Bitcoin versus the dollar. He's on the, do the team of the dollar and understands that, you know, ultimately the power of the United States would be largely diminished if there was a new reserve currency put in place uh, and any kind of a threat to that they're going to squash. We've seen remarks from Trump um, saying that, you know, he's all for the US dollar because he loves America um, and he, he, he doesn't want to see something like Bitcoin, which 
isn't one nation specific. It's global. Anybody can partake in it, um, reign supreme, uh, and kind of take that power away from them. So there's an awful lot going on. Uh, this was from Will Clement. Again, he's fantastic. 19 years old, um, absolutely at the top of his game. Um, Bitcoin has now spent seven days below 45K, prior range low, and still no major open interest wipeout. Either this is is sufficient uh, demand down at these levels, low 40s, or this open interest is not aggressively long. Um, this ties in very nicely with what we showed you about the CoinShares report and the outflows uh, and, and institutions somewhat sitting on the sidelines to see what kind of a direction that markets actually end up taking. Um, and it, it, there is a lot of uncertainty, and I can understand why such a risky asset like Bitcoin, people will shy away from given the sort of volatile nature or the uncertain nature that markets may or may not take. Whatever happens in the financial realm, i.e. your stocks and stuff like that, is going to have more of a heightened effect on the cryptocurrency realm um, for a number of reasons. Market cap is just one, liquidity is another, um, and it being so small and speculative still, uh, and, and largely not adopted in the same way. Everything is is over leveraged. Um, the whole system runs on leverage at this point. It, it, it's a little bit worrying. I have my own theories of how I think everything's going to end, um, but that's for a completely another video. Um, but this was just my daily cryptocurrency market update. We love to keep you guys informed. We understand that there is a lot of panic out here. I get people asking my personal position in crypto consistently, um, even though I'm not a, and I'm not a financial advisor. Um, we leave a disclaimer in every single video saying that. I get people all the time trying to blame me for their investment decisions. And it's the lamest thing. You know, you're going to end up nowhere if you look for somebody else to blame all the time. It's not how the world works. You've got to own your own responsibility for the outcomes that you chose to, uh, for the decisions that you chose to make and the outcomes that come associated with it. Um, my personal position is crypto. I've been here for five years. I'm a hodler. Uh, coming up to five years now anyway, I'm, I've been a hodler for those entire five years. The investing in the bear market completely changed my life and I still see a long, bright future for crypto and I'm going to be hodling it well into the future and hopefully off into the sunset. Um, I'm a big believer that cryptocurrencies are going to change the world and I think you guys are lucky enough to be early investors in that technological revolution, a kindred to the internet. Somebody said a kindred isn't a word, akin to the internet um, and prior to that, akin to the uh, PC revolution, which both at the time were met with huge amounts of skepticism. Um, but ultimately today, everybody has a PC in their phone, uh, in their pocket, sorry, in the form of a smartphone. And the PC today is a millionth faster than the PC previously. And not only that, um, you know, with the internet, the same thing took place. The majority of people, certainly in the developed world, use the internet. Blockchain in the future, in my opinion, is going to be the base layer that runs a lot of things on. It's the next level to that, in my opinion. And I think we are early on um, on that kind of adoption curve. And, and you know, we spoke about Rob Paul as uh, Metcalf Law and stuff like that, that all kind of tie in very nicely with it. So that's really all I have for you. It was more of a video of me um, sharing some thoughts with you, um, maybe putting things into perspective, giving you the main thing really to watch. And that, of course, is the US dollar against Bitcoin. And that there's this kind of game being played. And certainly if you look at things like the Turkish lira, it's given up more ground um, to Bitcoin as it, it's it's almost becoming a stronger um, currency than Bitcoin. Um, and, and also to, to kind of prick your ears up to, to maybe some books that may... This is not just... I've, I've read plenty of books on currency. I just found that this one was a very easy read for beginners. Um, it's got a lot of pictures within it. Um, David Arell is the author uh, and it's called A Brief History of Money. 4,000 years of markets, currencies, debt, and crisis. And this, the reason I actually got this book was because it um, depicts the currencies that have gone through out history. Um, and, and it sort of, it talks about before we even had sort of currencies in the way that we know them in the form of coins and stuff, how they were clay tablets, cuneiform tablets, and stuff like that. And the reason I got this is because I'm actually, I, I collect currencies uh, throughout history and I'm working on putting together a project that I can show people a, a, an accurate timeline um of the first currency that we had which is very expensive um all the way up to where we are today and we're going to go through everything um and of course he references adam smith's book uh, the wealth of nations which is really the the the, the foundation um of what 
modern economics, modern finance is ran on. Um, it, it, it's a really good book. This is one of the first ones I've ever read. It's a little bit, if you don't have any kind of a background knowledge on finance, it can take a little bit to get your head around. I've read this book several times. It's a really old book. I love old books. Uh, and this is just another good book whilst I'm talking about books um, to read, potentially, if you're looking to be an investor or you're looking to maybe gain wealth within your life. Uh, and it's called The Richest Man in Babylon. I thought this was a brilliant book. I really enjoyed reading this. Simple read. Um, you know, I love the reference to Babylon, The Richest Man in Babylon by George Clayson. Um Great book. So that's really all I have for you in this video, guys. I'm going to love and leave you on that note. I hope everyone's having a great day, despite the market conditions. They're a little bit more perky today. Um, it, to me, this just seems rather like a bit of relief. Um, ultimately, we are expecting big things for the cryptocurrency markets as we understand what's around the corner and that we're very early in terms of adoption and, and it, we're actually seeing some of these cryptos implemented in day-to-day -day life in a big way. All I have for you in the video, guys, I'm going to love and leave you on that note. Thank you very much for watching. Head over to my Twitter, by the way, at Real All in Crypto. We do have a card on a stake pool um, and so on and so forth. But I'll catch you all in the next video, guys. Thanks for watching.